What's going on? It's Brother Johnny Mack, and welcome to Impact Evangelism. This channel seeks to equip you and inspire you to do evangelism. This channel is all about evangelism. So if you're interested in spreading the gospel, this channel is for you. And one of the most effective ways I can help you to do evangelism is through a testimony. And that's what this video series is all about. The never-ending stories of evangelism. These are stories designed to help you, to inspire you, to encourage you to tell others about Jesus Christ. And that's what evangelism is, is sharing the gospel with those around you. So in this first episode, I would like to tell you a story about the ninth floor. The ninth floor. For many years, I did evangelism work in the Jefferson County Jail in Birmingham, Alabama. And this was several years that I did this ministry, and one day I hope to get back to it. But uh, for now, I'm doing other outreach ministries. But at this time, I was doing a ministry there at the county jail. And what we would do is a group of preachers would come in and meet on a Thursday night, and we would wait in the lobby, and, and we would pair up with each other. We had to go in by two people to each unit to preach the gospel. And we would go down there into the lobby, and we'd fellowship and talk, and, and we would pray with each other, and then we'd... Uh, get sent upstairs to go to the jail. Now, the jail in Birmingham is about 10 stories high. And on each level, there were different inmates. Like on the first floor was where they did the booking. Then a certain floor, they would have the ladies on a, on a floor. Then on a certain floor, they would have nonviolent offenders. And on the ninth floor, which is what this story is about, is where the inmates that were in jail for violent crimes, for either rape or robbery or murder or some kind of assault, something like that. These are where, this is where these guys were housed, right? So we would get on an elevator and we would go up to the ninth floor, and we would go through, and the and the uh, Jefferson County uh, Sheriff's deputy was there to meet us. He was in charge of a block. And you go on a floor, and each unit has about, I think it's about eight different units on this one floor. And in each unit was about 40 men. So we went into the, uh, this certain, I forgot what unit it was, and we went on this certain cell block, and we went inside. And here's, here's how it's set up. You go in through these iron doors, right? They let you in, and they shut the doors behind you, so you're in there. You know, just you and the other preacher, two guys in there on the ninth floor uh, with all the inmates. So we need, you know, we need protection, we need courage, we need all these things that are going through our minds, right? And it's not like a chapel service where it's not like church where they come, you come in and they have to sit there and be quiet and, and pay attention. They get to do whatever they want to while we're there. There's no rules or mandates that say they have to listen to us. This is like an open market, so to speak, there in their, in their cell. So we would go in, there would be a TV on the wall that would be on, and there would be guys upstairs on the a balcony playing checkers, and there'd be guys on the floor at the tables playing cards. And we can't tell them to pay attention, we can't tell them to turn the TV off, none of that stuff, we just have to start. And hope, hopefully people will listen. And usually they do. They're usually real respectful. And they'll turn around and, and pay attention. And sometimes they'll even uh, turn the TV off. It depends on who is in charge of the, of the cell block. And what I mean by who's in charge, not the deputy. Usually one of the toughest guys is kind of the leader of the cell block. And he leads by example. And the way he says goes, if he wants the TV off, the TV goes off. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm not sure who was the cell block leader with, among these guys, but uh, the TV was no problem being on. And in fact, there were 40 men in there, and nobody ever even looked, looked our way, never even made eye contact with us. 
And so they're up on the balcony, you know, they're dropping F-bombs and saying the Lord's name in vain, playing cards, TV's up, you know, all the way. It's loud, they're talking, it's, no one's paying attention. I just start to preach. And the whole time I'm preaching, man, nobody even looks at me, much less is pay, trying to listen or trying to pay attention. Nobody even looks and makes eye contact with me. And so this kind of, you know, stirred me up a little bit. I was like, man, why aren't these guys listening? This is the gospel. This is the message that Jesus Christ died for their sins and rose again the third day and they can have their sins forgiven and have a home in heaven forever and have a relationship with Jesus. All these things are running through my mind and they're, and they're just not paying attention. I'm thinking, man, this is the bread of life I'm offering you. This is the way, the truth, and the life. This is Jesus. And I wanted every guy in that room to be saved and every guy in that room to have their sins forgiven. And they just would not pay attention. And so what I did, man, I actually stood on top of a table right there in the middle of that cell block with 40 dudes. And I'm, you know, if, if anybody out there has ever seen any, any of my videos preaching or seen me preach in person, I get pretty wound up. But, you know, I'm a leather-lunged, old-school preacher, right? And when I'm preaching, I'm preaching. So I get up on top of this table, and then I'm preaching my heart out, man. I'm just going to town. And still, nobody ever even looks at me. And so that's it. You know, our time's up. And we shut the doors, and we and we leave, and me and my partner are looking at each other and say, man, ooh, that's never happened before. And so why would I share this story with you, my very first episode, on the never-ending stories of evangelism? This, this video series is designed, again, to help you share the gospel. And, you know, this sounds like a discouraging story. In a way, it is. But I wanted to get this story out on the first video that I did because, th here's why. Because I went back the next week, and I went back the next week, and I went back the next week, and I never got discouraged. I kept going back and back and back to that Jefferson County Jail, and eventually people would listen, people would repent, people would get saved, people would be set free from their sin, and they would be they have a relationship with Jesus. So the point of this story is for you not to give up. Never get discouraged when you're sharing the gospel because you're going to make mistakes. Don't let fear and don't let uh, fear of mistakes and fear of outcome of the of the witnessing affect your ability to share the gospel to evangelize because your job is just to do it. You understand? You're, you can't save them. You can, you can persuade them with all your might and, and, and explain to them why they need to be saved, but it's really a hard thing that they have to do between their self and God. Our, our job is just to deliver the message. And that's, I'm really not that, I've been preaching now for over 20 years, straight evangelism all over the world. And I don't have a lot of talents. I'm not a great preacher. I'm not an outstanding evangelist. But this one thing I try to do, is, and that is to never give up. I always show up when I'm supposed to show up, and I share people with the gospel with them. Whether I'm outside shopping or online or doing YouTube videos or if I'm traveling to Mongolia to preach the gospel, I just try to be there. The, the biggest thing you have to realize, if you want to evangelize and share the gospel with people, you have to be available. <laughs> you have to cut out some time in your life to do it. And don't get discouraged. You'll say things wrong. You'll make mistakes. And you'll have people mad at you. You'll have people that will ask you questions and you don't know the answer to. But that's okay. There's nothing wrong with not knowing the answer to everything, and you will make mistakes, you'll say the wrong thing, you might offend people, not on purpose, but you might make someone mad at you, someone angry at you. That's just part of it, but you cannot give up. You've got to hang in there and keep sharing that gospel with whatever door God opens for you. And eventually, I'm telling you, if you stick to it, people will listen and people will be saved. 
So, that's what the Night 4 story is all about. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Make yourself available. And please check out the rest of our YouTube channel. Like I said, Impact Evangelism is all about sharing the gospel. It's all about evangeliz evangelism and, and wanting people to be saved and come to know the Lord. And we have videos of our preaching, of our, uh, of our uh, music ministry, all designed just to give you encouragement and inspire you to share the gospel. And we also have teaching videos on here that mix in apologetics with your evangelism that teaches you step by step how to do that. Okay? So just check out our channel and, and hopefully you come back, check out all our playlists. We've got about 50 plus videos up right now. Check on our back catalog. And this series is again for you to help you to equip you to evangelize and tell people about Jesus. The best thing you could do, right, is tell them that Jesus Christ died for their sins and rose again the third day, and they could be saved. That's the message. So what are you waiting for? Go out today and share the gospel. And I'll see you next time on the never-ending stories of evangelism. <laughs>